My first uh, theater that I had was not acoustically treated, but it was in the same space that you see here. Um, it was, and I had uh, a stacked um, um, 980 Ultra Runco system. And it was able to light up pretty well a nine foot screen for me. And it was in the days really where um, the digital projectors just weren't uh, up to the quality of CRT. In fact, it wasn't even close. And um, from there, I uh, then renovated the room into the, uh, the room that you see here, but using two uh, stacked um, G90 Sony projectors. Um, they were higher resolution, higher light output um, projectors, and I went to an 11 foot screen at that point, still 16 by 9 aspect ratio. And from there, four and a half years ago, uh, I made the decision to go to a digital projector and get the CRTs out of the room. And the idea was basically I could get a much larger screen, uh, a lot more dynamics with the light output capability. It, was had, it had uh, all the resolution that I would want with uh, uniformity across the screen that CRTs couldn't compete with. And also, it allowed me to have the uh, scope aspect ratio screen that I have now, the 14-foot uh, uh, Vista scope. Uh, and it has enough light output also to be able to light up that screen at, at uh, about 20-foot Lamberts. Um, and, uh, so it also allowed me to get the CRTs out of the room, so it really opened up the look of the room. So now, where I had CRTs on the ceiling before, which took up quite a bit of space, although it did look nice, it, it didn't look nearly as nice as the clean look that we have now. And now the projector is behind the room in a separate projection room, um, firing through the port that you see there. You can see uh, through the port, uh, the, in front of the primary lens on the projector is an ISCO-3 uh, anamorphic lens. And the anamorphic lens actually uh, allows one to stretch the image on the 16 by 9 chip and utilize the entire, uh, the entire chip when you do it. So there's no, no zooming or loss of pixels this way. And the ISCO-3 is, is certainly if not the pinnacle, it is, it is one of the best anamorphic lenses available. And it's on a sled, which is motorized and works with the remote. So when, we, uh, when I uh, hit on the remote that I, I want to be in a 2-3-5 or a scope aspect ratio, the projector will stretch the image to fill the chip and then the anamorphic lens will uh, re-stretch the image out to the screen and I'm going to show you how that works. Okay, so when we, uh, when I go to uh, a, a scope aspect, aspect ratio film, um, the lens moves in automatically on on, um, on the uh, motorized slide. Uh, it's called a cine slide, and it's probably one of the nicer um, units available. Um, Scott Horton designed and built it. And uh, it, it is really just uh, a wonderful thing because the lens moves in and just, as you can see, in about a second and a half. Again, uh, anamorphic lenses uh, really allow one to utilize and maximize the resolution of the projector um, and, the, uh, and the light output of the projector compared to any other technique of, uh, of uh, 2 3 5 aspect ratio projection. This is the, uh, the projector, it's a SIM HT5000 three-chip DLP. It's got a, a lot of light output uh, for the big screen that we use. The shelf you see below it was, we originally designed it so that the projector would sit uh, on a small cradle um, on that shelf. Uh, and despite the fact that it's, it's, it's quite well supported with the amount of power with the subwoofers we have, we were getting some vibration of the projector itself. So we had the ceiling reinforced so that there is three-quarter inch plywood on all of the roof trusses tied into the area that where the projector is now and then it's mounted to the ceiling and that totally eliminated the vibration which is just fantastic but this is the back side from the uh, that you saw um, firing through the port a few moments ago uh, this is the component alcove and uh, this was the way this was laid out was 
uh, one of the uh, specific things I had in the design that I gave to Dennis. And that was, I wanted to be able to have the equipment out of sight when you're in the room. So when you're in the theater, uh, this area really is, is out, of, out of sight from anybody in, a, in, in the seating. And it, and it also allows it to be hidden, it allows it to be quieter, and it allows the, uh, the face of all the components to be lit up and it not interfere with the uh, viewing experience in the theater space itself. However, simultaneously, I can be standing in front of the rack, I can be making any adjustments that I want to, and at the same time, I have the screen visible to my left. So uh, it allows uh, a, a very uh, functional uh, use of the, uh, of the space and at the same time it doesn't interfere with the viewing experience. And so we have a Middle Atlantic uh, Slim 5 rack which is mostly filled with um, the, um, the Blu-ray player um, and the um, Comcast cable box and an HD DVD player. And I still use a, uh, a standard DVD player. It allows us to run uh, music at the same time as we're doing other things if we want. So I have a separate um, that and it's, it's mostly for demonstrations, but I still use it for that. And I have a Radiance uh, video processor and um, the uh, Dolby Lake uh, equalizer, which is uh, one of the uh, better equalizers uh, available. And it uh, really makes the room sound fantastic. It does require a lot of work for setup and it's done uh, mostly in a manual way, not an automatic or computerized way. And uh, Mark Seaton uh, set that up for me as well. And then on the bottom of the rack is the, um, the amplifiers for the uh, subwoofers, the in-wall subwoofers, as well as the surround speakers. Uh, behind me is uh, the bulk of my software. I have uh, an, another section um, of, of runover in, in my um, projection room with some shelves, but uh, the bulk of my software is here. This is Art again at the, and I'm hoping everyone had a, uh, a good time watching our video and seeing, and perhaps some ideas for something that you might want to do in your own home. Um, and this is how I, I found a lot of the ideas myself, so I hope you enjoyed what we did.